My name is Konstantinos Buzmalis. I'm uh, from Google Brain, and I will talk to you today about uh, Pixel DA, a framework for unsupervised pixel level domain adaptation with uh, generative adversarial neural networks. Uh, this is work that uh, we did at Google Research and uh, Google Brain together with uh, Nathan Silberman, uh, David Dohan, Dumitru Erhan, and Dilip Krishnan. I will start from the uh, basics and tell you a little bit about what domain adaptation is. Uh, the goal is to train a model on a source data set for which we have uh, a lot of label samples and apply this model on a target data set which is generated from uh, a different distribution. We talk about unsupervised domain adaptation when we have no labels in the target domain. And we talk about semi-supervised domain adaptation when we have fewer labels in the target domain than in the source domain. In this work, we care about unsupervised domain adaptation for visual data, although we do have experiments in, uh, in our uh, uh, paper for semi-supervised domain adaptation as well, if uh, uh, you want to see them. Why do we care? Well, creating high-quality data sets like ImageNet and Coco is very, very important, and at the same time, is very, very costly. We cannot uh, hope to uh, produce uh, uh, data sets of such uh, caliber and such scale for every single task that we want to, uh, to, to experiment with. Consider the, uh, the task of uh, robotic manipulation or uh, self-driving cars, or uh, consider the task of uh, pixel-level labeling for instance and semantic segmentation. These annotation tasks are simply impossible at uh, the scale of millions of samples. What we propose is uh, to have the ability to generate an infinite amount of synthetic data, and uh, with the help of domain adaptation, uh, be able to transfer models trained on this synthetic data to the real world. As an example, on the right-hand side here, I have uh, RGB and depth samples from uh, some of the objects uh, in various poses from the uh, cropped line mode data set, which is a data set for classification and uh, 3D pose estimation. In this work, we used a synthetic version of the data set produced by a renderer, and we also used uh, the real uh, world samples, of course, uh, all uh, cropped with the uh, uh, object of interest in uh, center view. Getting the labels, the 3D pose labels for the real world samples is extremely pedantic, whereas uh, the, the renderer can give this uh, to us for free for all the uh, millions of samples that we want to generate. A little bit about related work. There is two types of methods in uh, recent uh, related work on unsupervised domain adaptation, uh, and they are uh, both done at the feature level. The first type of uh, methods uh, uses a fixed feature extractor, and we want to learn the mapping function from the source domain features to the target domain features. The second type of uh, method uses a third feature encoder, shared between the source and the target domain, and we learn in an end-to-end -end fashion domain invariant features with the help of a similarity loss a batch-based similarity loss, which uh, tries to bring the uh, uh, distributions of the features from source and target domain as close to each other as possible. We further train this uh, feature with the help of a task loss and the uh, source labels that we have uh, available to us. In this work, we propose a new type of uh, uh, unsupervised domain adaptation method in which we learn the mapping from source to target domain, but at the pixel level. So what we propose, in essence, is a learning a generator that, given a source image, is able to generate an image that looks like it came from the uh, target domain, from the, from the real world. For the, cri for the cropped uh, line mode example that uh, I talked about earlier, this would amount, uh, for example, to, to, to pass uh, uh, a sample of uh, a toy cat uh, that is rendered in a specific pose to the generator. The generator would make it look a lot more realistic uh, it would still look like a cat and it would still uh, uh, retain the pose. And this would be uh, particularly important because the generated images must be useful for training the downstream task model, which in this case would be classification and pose estimation. The key idea behind Pixel DA is that we learn these pixel level transformations from source to target domain by employing a generative adversarial neural network, which is conditioned on both uh, a source image and a noise vector. So in essence, we have a discriminator network which is trying to discriminate between target and generated images, and a generator network which is trying to produce generated images that will confuse the uh, discriminator. A key concept uh, in Pixel DA is that we also train uh, the task model at the same time as uh, the discriminator, and we train it on both source and generated images. We also have a content similarity loss between the source and generated images, and both these losses really help stabilize uh, uh, training and avoid mode shift 
uh, a problematic uh, case in which, for example, uh, a cat would consistently be converted into a duck in this case. Some of the advantages of the choices we have made for pixel DA is, for example, the de facto decoupling from the task-specific architecture. And this is very important. In most unsupervised domain adaptation methods, one cannot simply switch the task model without relearning the entire domain adaptation process. In Pixel DA, we can simply get the newer version of, uh, of our task and keep our, our generator fixed and retrain uh, our, our new task model. Training stability. Adaptation processes that rely on adversarial training are sensitive to random initialization. By adding these task-specific and content similarity losses, we're able to regularize the process, avoid mode shift, and show that uh, we improve repeatability. And we saw this uh, uh, in uh, our experimental section in our text. Data augmentation. By conditioning our model to a stochastic vector as well as a source image, we're able to generate a large number of stochastic samples that appear similar to the target domain. And we show, I'll show you in a couple of slides how this uh, uh, helps with our experiments. For our experimental setup, we always train on the source training set, and we adapt on the target adaptation set. We use a, a small validation set of target images to choose optimal hyperparameters, and we report the results on the uh, target test set. We use the variety of uh, domain adaptation scenarios. One of those scenarios was the adaptation of MNIST digits to MNIST M digits. I believe most of you are familiar with MNIST. For MNIST M, we use MNIST digits as binary masks with which to invert the colors of random crops from a scene's data set. The task here, of course, is uh, digit classification. I already talked about uh, this task a little bit. This is the uh, uh, most challenging domain adaptation scenario we tackled. Uh, and we, were going, we, were, we wanted to adapt synthetic to real crop line mode uh, samples. The task here is instance classification and 3D pose estimation. And we have 11 objects in uh, various poses. Let's start with uh, the results for our first uh, uh, domain adaptation scenario. And let's look at the qualitative results uh, first. From top to bottom, uh, the first uh, row uh, is the input to the generator. It's our source uh, images. The second row is the output of our generator. And the, the third row are, are the samples, the MNSTEM samples that are visually most similar to the corresponding uh, generated images. Now let's take a look at the uh, quantitative results. Uh, the table on the right uh, corresponds to the accuracy on the test set of MNSTEM. Let's pay attention to the first row, source only refers to a model that was trained only on the source data set on MNIST uh, digits and used no domain adaptation. Target only, that's the last row, corresponds to a model that was trained only on MNIST uh, training, uh, on the, the MNIST uh, training set. So these two rows essentially serve as soft indicators of upper and lower bounds, lower and upper bounds of what we could be expecting for our domain adaptation methods. And we compare our model against uh, um, many feature-level domain adaptation uh, techniques. There are a couple of interesting aspects to these results that we need to take away from this slide. Number one, our generator is able to learn the underlying generative process for MNSTEM. If you notice, it doesn't only learn to insert backgrounds, but it's actually learning uh, the inversion process. And you can see this clearly at digits uh, three and six. Number two, our generator does not memorize images from the MNSTEM uh, domain, from the target domain. And number three, and most importantly, Pixel DA outperforms not only the feature level models, but it's actually doing better than the target only results. And this is uh, the results that we would hope to get if the entire uh, target uh, training set was labeled and available to our task model. So this is a very important result. For our second uh, domain adaptation scenario, uh, synthetic to real crop line mode, uh, the task classification and 3D pose estimation. Again, for our um, qualitative uh, result, from top to bottom, we have the RGBD input to the generator. We have the output of uh, the generator, and again, the nearest neighbors in uh, pixel space. What we can see here is that the uh, generator is able to generate a variety of uh, samples, of RGB samples, uh, that uh, correspond to the variety that we see in the target domain. And it's also able to make the depth maps a lot more realistic. For the quantitative results, we measure the performance uh, with uh, classification accuracy and mean angle error. 
mean angle error is the angle the object would need to rotate around a fixed axis to move from the predicted to the ground truth uh, pose. Classification uh, is, relatively, uh, is a relatively easy task in this case, and most domain adaptation techniques are able to achieve an almost perfect score. For pose estimation, uh, most domain adaptation techniques did perform better than the source-only uh, results. However, the error uh, for most feature-level techniques was still pretty, pretty high. Pixel DA was able to more than half the mean angle error, bringing us a lot closer to using further refinement techniques like ICP. To summarize what I have uh, talked about today, Pixel DA is a, a framework for unsupervised pixel level domain adaptation. We use task specific and content specific losses to stabilize the underlying GAN model. Pixel DA provides state of the art results on uh, various domain adaptation datasets, and I talked about a couple of those uh, here. And we believe that Pixel DA is potentially very useful for the case of synthetic to real domain adaptation where low-level, pixel-level changes are really needed. Please come to our poster number 11 for a lot more results uh, and, uh, and a lot more uh, figures. And uh, another announcement, uh, we uh, adjust, uh, released our Terzoflow implementation, and you can find it at the link I provide here. Thank you very much.